Inc. coming at you again with Eddie Cohen. Hi guys. The man, the myth, the legend. We're going to go ahead and answer some of our questions here from our members. Lars has this question in this week. In your eight-week training program on the site, how should I pick the two, the week two weights, so that I can hit the increases without stalling in subsequent weeks? This is the first half of this question. Well, pr pretty much what you do is, is when you write out your routine, you go from what you think your projected max would be and go all the way back down to week one. So whether it's eight weeks, ten weeks, twelve weeks, however long the routine is, is start at the top, go all the way down to week one, and it, it has to be reasonable all the way up. It's always written in pencil, not named, because you might have to make changes along the way. But you'll start feeling it out and what your what your as far as how you're good at reps, how you're good at doing sets of five, how you're good at threes, how you're good at twos, all the way up. So you have to have an idea. It may take once or twice of doing a whole training cycle to figure out what it, you know, how good you are at, at each, you know, uh, session. Okay. He says he'll be starting. Uh, he'll be starting the program just after a meet, so he'll have a true one rep max available. Maybe using 95% of that one rep max as his target weight for the doubles on week six and subtract week two from that. This is kind of kind of his, his thought process on that. And he says maybe he's just overthinking it. No, you're not overthinking it, but I mean, because you have to. You're the only one doing it, so you got to think of what you're going to do. But do what I said. I, I have many, many routines. I, I, I start at like exactly what you said, what your one, one rep max was in the last meet, what you think you want to hit at the next one, and work it down write three or four different routines to see how you're going to start. Don't start it off at what your eight rep max would be or else you got nowhere to go from there. You have to keep progressing all the way through it. Fantastic. Uh, James McDonald from the site says, I have a push and pull meet coming up in four weeks. I'll be doing deadlifting in this meet, 55 years old, and right now his best lift is 550. How many weeks before a meet should he stop doing assistance work for his deadlifts and just work on the opening attempt by doing heavy singles. Thanks for the advice. I would not necessarily just work up to heavy singles before me. You have four four weeks left. I, I'd have to know where you are right now. But it would with four weeks left it's just mainly if it's if it's four heavy days left, it's mainly just uh, two triples, a double and maybe an opener. But until the last week I'd keep doing all my assistance work. The last week, I'd maybe do some uh, a light row and a light pull down, a light shrug, and that's about it a week before. But you don't need too much else before to keep it going. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, Steve Gabriel from the website says, "Hey Ed, I know that my three rep and two rep max are. He knows exactly what they are, and he should be looking to purposely break these maxes in the later weeks of the cycle before he peaks for a new one rep max. Or." Would this burn him out too much and screw up his ability to peak out? No, it's not necessarily going to burn him out. It's just called progress as far as doing better than what you did before in whatever rep range you're in. Um, again, as I just answered the last question, start at the, the, the last week of the cycle and go back to where you started. And take your jumps accordingly. But, yeah, I would always be looking to do better. So you're going to, you're going to break that PR each time out. Right. Excellent. All right. Um, we got a special one here from John Funk. He's actually sending some videos for us to critique. Um, so we'll have those on the website as well as that breaks down his questions here. He says he's been regularly having problems with his back slipping on the bench during the bench press whenever uh, he initiates a leg drive. You know, this normally happens during the last rep of a heavy set or during a PR attempt. And he has an example on the video which we'll show. Now he's tried wearing different shirts, not using plates underneath his feet, placing a rubber anti-slip mat on the bench, and even tried applying skateboard grip tape, similar to sandpaper, on the bench itself. But he still occasionally slips. He doesn't think there's anything else that he can do or apply to the bench to prevent that slipping, and he's thinking that the problem lies in how he's actually setting up his body on the bench itself. Is there anything that he can do with his bench press setup to prevent that slipping whenever he initiates that leg drive? Yeah, it, it, it pretty much sounds like uh, he's, he's locked in the bench. As soon as he initiates his leg drive, instead of keeping his back locked up tight, what he probably does is he relaxes it. So he pushes with his legs, relaxes, and the whole body moves back on the bench towards his head. So you're not keeping your back tight enough, locking your shoulder blades enough. 
So it's not it's not so much the things that he can do to adapt the bench itself, but it's the locking and tightness. Yeah, it's just it's it's a setup and how he's staying tight through the he's loosening it up as soon as he go, goes to push with his legs, he loosens up his upper upper back and lets his shoulder blades go. Mm -hmm. All right, it's time for our Facebook questions here. And uh, Kevin has a question. He says he's uh, he hope he's not too late. Right on time there, Kevin, with your question. Currently, uh, he benches straight line raw. He's seen and heard a lot of stronger lifters drive up the bar towards their face rather than pressing it in a straight line. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, depends on the length of your arms, pretty much. Okay. But most of the time, most of the best benchers, especially it's, it, actually Shaco, the great Russian coach, is, has a lot of outlines it's, it, uh, in his books. But what it is, it, it basically you press straight up to a point, and then there's a gentle curve in the arch backwards. So at least halfway straight, and then there's a gentle curve backwards as you drive through. That's pretty much it. Everyone pretty much does the same thing. That makes sense. Uh, he just uh, mentions that he feels better pressing in a straight line. He's 5'6", has a medium length in, in terms of his arms. Well, it, it, a lot of times everything feels good up to a point, up until you get to the, that max weight. And then a lot of times the form that you did at the lighter weights doesn't take you through to the heavier weights, or to get better to reach a certain point. But yeah, just just slightly towards the, your spotter, basically, on the way up after a certain point near the end. Okay. Fantastic. George Funk asks, when squatting, is a pelvic tuck under of the butt wing a big problem? Yeah, you, you don't want to you don't want to have it tucked underneath you as you're squatting, or else it prohibits you from using your hips and your hamstrings more. So yeah, definitely sit back and let it go go back and down. Right. But also, as he says, how did you first start powerlifting? How were you introduced to it? And how did you go about becoming a powerlifter? I watched it on TV. I saw Cass, and I was like, that guy's a monster. I want to look like that. And I didn't realize he was 6'2", 330 pounds at the time, so <laughs> the height thing was a little bit off. But uh, there were some guys at a local gym that I that uh, were powerlifting, and I just jumped in with them and read the magazines and learned along the way the hard way, which is the best way to learn. Absolutely. All right, uh, Joseph Gorski asked the question, Eddie, you ever plan to compete again? Uh, doubtfully. Maybe in a raw meet, only because it's easier and I don't have to live up to everything I used to do. But, uh, no, I can't see it right now. I'm just getting stronger again and feeling good about it. So I don't have any predictions. All right, that wraps it up for our Facebook questions. As you can see, I'm wearing my uh, Mark Bell shirt on, Super Training Gym. Been friends with Mark for a long time, so I thought I'd wear a shirt and say thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. We appreciate you guys sending your questions in, and thank you.